Hello, everyone, and welcome to all you need to know about Autodesk Flexim. My name is Juliana, and I work in marketing here at MicroCAD. And today's presenter is Jose, our applications specialist. Um, at today's webinar, we'll give you a deep dive into how Flexim can model real world processes, identify bottlenecks, and improve efficiency. Um, as usual, throughout the webinar, you can ask a question at any given point on the left-hand corner. You can ask Jose to revisit a step or ask any questions. This is your time and we want you to make the most of it. And in the upper left-hand corner, sorry, right-hand corner, you will find links to our social media website and YouTube channel. We post all of our webinars there at the end, so you can share with colleagues or rewatch it on your own time. And without further ado, I'll pass it on to Jose. Hi, Jose. Hi, Juliana. How are you doing? Hello, everybody. Welcome to this webinar about FlexSim. Uh, we're very excited about this new product. Uh, this is our recent acquisition by Autodesk because it's a very powerful program. Uh, it's a very, very useful software and possibilities for uh, many industries are huge. Um, so the idea today in this webinar is to explain what uh, Flexim is, basically how it can work for your workflows, how it can work for your industry, and take a, uh, a look into how it looks, how uh, what it can do, okay? Obviously, uh, it's a very, very powerful software, and there's a lot to it. So, uh, but we're gonna review the basic concepts. What you need to actually know, to you know how this software works. Okay, so we're gonna start by asking what is Flexing, how it can help you in your processes. Then we're gonna delve into a little uh, demo on how everything looks on the software, and then we're gonna open the floor to some questions. Right, so what is FlexSim? FlexSim is a 3D simulation and analysis software. Uh, it's meant to work as a discrete event simulation software that runs in a continuous manner, if that makes sense. That is, uh, on the 3D environment, you place your assets, you place uh, everything that composes your system and you define the logic on how it, they're supposed to interact with each other, okay? So if uh, you're planning on modeling, um, say the process of manufacturing of a product or logistics on how this little um, uh, forklift is supposed to take packages here and there on, or how uh, this person is supposed to take packages from this point to point B or work in this station if you want to check on how much idle time this machine has, if you want to check how this resource is being utilized, you can use all of that in Flexing, right? So it's a systems simulation software, right? But it works in a 3D environment as um, in a 3D environment, all right? It uses graphic and programmable logic. That is, every single object is supposed to work in a certain way. It has a, pro, a predefined logic that you can make use of, but you can also program the logic on the objects. And uh, you can model different scenarios. You can do experiments. For example, if you want to move your machines from here to there, check how that's going to affect your workflow check how much lead time it's going to be affected by that, uh, check how uh, a CAN diagram will look on a regular working day. You can do all of that in Flex, okay? So it's a very, very powerful program. It's very configurable. So it's used in many different industries. It's used in manufacturing. It's used in healthcare. It's used in services. It's used in logistics. You name it. Okay, as so long as you can imagine it and uh, you can place your assets in a 3D environment, you can make use of it, right? So in this case, what we're gonna do is 
we're going to do a little demo. We're going to create a very simple model to explain the concepts on, on Flexim, on how it works. And we're going to do some modifications, right? So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the software. And we're going to create a new model, right? In this case, we need to specify uh, the units we're going to be working with, uh, the length, the time units, uh, if we're going to manage fluids, uh, the fluid units, and uh, starting time. So everything in Flexing works uh, relative to time and to a starting point in time. OK? So the first thing you need to know about Flexim is you have an environment, right? And you have some resources that you can use, right? There are basically three types of resources. You get a fixed resource, for example, a processor that I'm going to bring in from my library. Or a source, right? The fixed resources are objects that remain stationary in my model, and they are going to produce a flow item, OK? So the flow item is the object that's going to run or it's going to move or it's going to be processed in my model, right? So for example, right now, what I want to do is uh, I want to, uh, I'm going to create a simple process. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in bottles that uh, will be brought by my source are going to be stored in my queue right here, and they're going to go through my processor. So let's suppose what I need to do is place the label on them. Pretty simple, pretty easy. And after I'm done processing them, I'm going to send them out to a sink. Right? So very, very, very straightforward, very easy, right? So first thing I need to do is bring in my fixed resources. And then I need to set up my flow items. Okay, so from my source right here, I'm going to establish the type of resource that we want to bring in. So in this case, it's going to be a pill bottle. Right? Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to specify how these objects are supposed to connect with each other. So the most simple way this can work is from a source, I'm going to connect right here to my queue. So the bottles are stored here. From my queue, my bottles are going to go to my processor, right? And then they're going to get out of my processor and into the sink, All right? Then what you need to do is specify how each one of these fixed resources work, right? So for example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to establish how often I am going to get bottles in my source, right? So for example, I can specify that I will be getting um, a bottle every 60 seconds, let's say, OK? And uh, I'm going to keep it real simple on the queue. I'm going to specify that I can store as many bottles as I want. And what I'm going to suppose here is I want to check what happens with my model if I cannot process all of those uh, as fast as I need. Okay. So uh, on my processor, I'm going to establish a process time of 50 seconds. Okay. And then when the bottle is done, it's going to go to my sink. OK, so the easiest model that I can create, I'm going to run. And when I hit run, I want you to pay close attention to what's going to happen here. My runtime is going to start at a certain time right here. And I'm going to run on a, a certain speed. OK, so let's get started. See that I get a little pill right there. Oops, sorry. We 
actually this doesn't make sense because I specified that the process time is less than the arrival time, right? So yeah, it doesn't make sense. Let's say processing time is supposed to be 75 seconds. Now this will make more sense, right? So I got my bottle that is being processed, right? I get another bottle that appear up there that I'm going to take, right? So as soon as the other one's done, my other bottle is going to go into my processor, but there's a new one right there. Okay, so I can keep tracking, but what happens when time goes by, right? You see, I will be able to process those as long as my day goes by, but I'm not that fast to process all of them as I want it to, right? So my bottles are going to accumulate, okay? So in a nutshell, this is the most basic setup that you can have, okay? So real simple, real easy, but you can make things as complex as you want, okay? And you can set up your models as complex as you want as well, right? For example, visuals, right? Here, we have these fixed resources that by default are well, uh, blue square, if that makes sense, uh, platform, and this machine, uh, this conveyor right here, but this could be basically whatever you want, okay? For example, instead of having little pills like this, I could have uh, little bottle pills like this. I could have another asset for my source. Let's say I'm going to create a new flow item. This is going to be a full bottle with a label. Right? So we label, going to reset. And there we go. We have a different asset, right? Or I could have something as complex or different as a different process right? Or a different queue. Let's suppose now I don't want to check on uh, on bottles or what I want to simulate. It's not placing labels on a bottle, but this is supposed to be a help desk service, okay? So instead of bottles, what I will have is people, right? So I could change this to a person, right? And of course, it doesn't make sense because I don't want to send a person down a machine. So maybe inside of a machine, what I will have right here is a table, right? So I'm going to change my visuals for my model and I'm going to browse a model, right? So you see, you can even bring in models for, uh, from different software as well. If uh, you have a uh, table inventor, for example, or if you created a model in 3ds Max, something like that, you can bring those as well. So, for example, right now, my processor is going to be this table right there. Okay. I can modify the looks on my table. I can make them larger. I can edit the visuals on my table, right? So now this is going to be, oops, uh, I don't want this moving right here. So I'm not going to animate it. And I'm going to change where I want to place that guy, right? I don't want it to be floating around in the middle of my table. So I can change how I want my models to interact, right? That location, let's say, and see, this is gonna be minus point five. Let's see how that looks. There we go. Uh, gotta adjust the seal direction for this guy. Zero. And there we go. Now we have processing, if that makes sense, people coming into a help desk 
course, this is a very, very simple setup, but uh, I mentioned it can be as complex as you want, right? Uh, you can even modify um, uh, the system by itself uh, to make it more complex. For example, you can use statistical distributions on how you're expecting to work with people right here, right? For example, I'm not going to bring in a person every 60 seconds, but what I'm going to suppose is that people are going to come in with a statistical distribution, right? For example, uh, an exponential one, right? So I won't know for certain uh, how often a person is going to come in. That's more real. It's more realistic, right? But I can check based on a statistical distribution if my help disk is going to work, right? So you see that with that distribution, now I'm getting into trouble, okay? And I won't be able to run my model properly, all right? I can even add more complex logic, okay? So for example, um, let's suppose I'm going to bring in another model so we don't have to create all of that. Next slide. right so for example on this model what i have done to save a little time is specify an exponential arrival time right i specified a waiting line and i specified a logic that lets me establish a number of people a maximum number of people on this waiting line right so on the same right here what i have is what it's called a list okay so as soon as people arrive on this waiting line they're added to a list okay this list is going to include all the customers who are gonna get in and each one of those will be assigned at age in queue or uh, waiting time, if that makes sense. That's how long they've been on the line, right? And on my sync of unhappy customers, what I'm going to do is I'm going to specify that whenever a person is being more than 20, 200 seconds in that line, or if the size of the waiting line is larger than five people, people are gonna get out because they're gonna say, okay, you know what? It's been too long, I wanna get out of here. Or uh, they come in, there's already five people and they say, you know what, screw this, I don't wanna wait that long and I'm away, okay? So I'm gonna simulate my model right now. Really, you see that if I'm getting people here, depends on the statistical distribution, right? But I'm not going to get more than five people in my wedding line. They're all going to go to the unhappy customers. I can even tell how many people have been in out, out the door, right? So 12 people so far have been gone out, okay? Maybe you may, may be asking, you know what? Uh, it's nice, but it will be even nicer if I could check on all those statistics on all that information in some sort of graphics, right? So you can do that in Flexin as well. You can add a dashboard that's going to show you the information for anything that's happening in your model, right? So say you want to check how many happy customers that is processed, quote unquote, customer you have and how many unhappy customers you have. You can do that as well, right? Or let's say you want to check on how often the machine is being used, or in this case, uh, the desk, right? So you get information for, for when it's being uh, used, when it's processing, when it's idle, and when this is taking place, right?
So it's a very, very powerful tool and it can be highly configurable. Uh, you can modify uh, the logic behind um, the entities and you can even add more complex entities, okay? For example, in this sort of example that I have right here, I've included an operator, okay? So the operator is an asset in your model that's supposed to perform tasks, okay? For example, they can, um, they can take an item and take it to another processor, or they can wait by, uh, by the processor to see if it's gonna work, okay? So in this model, for example, I have two operators. I have a dispatcher that controls them, and I can see the logic on how these machines are gonna work depending on which one is available, which one is gonna take the model from my queue into the machines and so on. All right? In this case, for example, I can even establish logic on how the dispatcher is gonna work, right? What I have right here is a connection between my source in this case of boxes, my queue, and my dispatcher. So the dispatcher is controlling how the link between my queue and my models are going to work, right? And my dispatcher basically it's still, uh, it's saying, okay, you know what? Circle between each one of those two guys to see which one is available, okay? So if by one, in this case, operator 1A is available, it's going to be used, right? And if another box in, as if uh, as happened right here, I'm going to run this a little slower. There we go. <clears throat> right there, this guy is occupied, so my second operator is gonna take the box, okay? This logic, they need to wait to process the box, right? But as soon as they're available, they're gonna take it to my next processor, okay? So I can check for different scenarios. I can check for uh, different ways of doing stuff. I can do little experiments, see what happens if I move my processor right here, what happens if I purchase a new machine, what happens if I include a new operator so I can make better decisions, I can get more revenue for my mom, for my business, all right? So in this case, what we wanted to do is give a little insight into what the software does. Of course, uh, there's a lot more to it on how, uh, how it works, what it can do. But uh, as always, for, for you guys, in case you want to get, uh, learn a little bit more about FlexSim and get some training and get the most out of it, if that makes sense, all right? So I guess that's what I wanted to show you guys today. Uh, it's a little... Uh, uh, preview on how the software looks. Uh, hopefully, we will get more serious on my, uh, for uh, on setting up models in FlexSim as soon as we get more people involved in this. So, uh, if there are any more other questions, uh, feel free to ask them now. Thank you. Thank you, Jose, for that wonderful presentation. And yeah, you have here our contact information based on region. You also have my my contact information in case you have any questions or any inquiries. Um, we're here to help you and get you going. Also, we will we'll be having um, coming up next a few webinars that maybe you're interested in. We'll have in October 17th, so that's next week um advanced aec projects driving results with digital project delivery um so yeah we highly suggest you to check that 
that box you have on the right hand for our registrations. And just even if you cannot make it, you can register and you will get the on-demand recording, just like for this one. So yeah, if we don't have further questions, I would like to thank Jose and thank everyone for attending. Okay, thank you everybody. And thank you, Juliana. I guess we'll see you next time. See you next time. Bye-bye.